Have you ever thought about opening your own mobile card or kiosk business? Maybe the facility you manage could establish new revenue by adding coffee, food, or retail services. Card King International can be the answer to your needs. Card King is a North American designer and manufacturer of the finest mobile coffee, food, and retail carts and kiosks. Card King has been working with clients and corporations across North America for 20 years, providing innovative designs, custom manufacturing, and timely delivery. Carts and kiosks are fun, and so are the dozens of designs on our website. Please visit us today at www.cart-king.com or just call us at 1-877-986-7771 and get your sales rolling. If you find yourself in need of legal representation, it can be a very stressful time in your life. In my career, I have dealt with thousands of lawyers, I've dealt with thousands of law firms, and I can confidently recommend to you Keith M. Davidson at kmdlaw.com. Available 24 hours, seven days a week. Just log into kmdlaw.com. That's kmdlaw.com. Or you can call toll-free 833-4-KMD-LAW. That's 833-4-KMD-LAW. Personal injury, wrongful death, STDs, sexual assault, car accidents. They handle it all efficiently and professionally. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be. Because the team at KMDLaw.com are battle-tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Go to KMDLaw.com or call toll-free 833-4KMDLaw. If you're in for the fight of your life, stop screwing around and contact KMDLaw. PureSoapFlakes.com, 218-568-2525. Have you ever heard of Castile Soap? Pure Soap Flake Company handcrafts fine soap bars, laundry powder, and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern Minnesota facility. Bathe your body and wash your clothes with pure soap products that are free of fragrance, GMOs, palm oil, sodium lauryl sulfate, and synthetic additives. Keep it clean, folks. Pure Soap Flake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. They have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opperman Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to sing a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars, and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. I've been using that stuff all day long today. Great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call. 218-568-2525. 218-568-2525. Pure Soap Flake Company is a proud member of the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild. The Opperman Report is brought to you by Aquadam.net. You can give them a call at 707-764-2119. A flooded home is never easy to deal with. You're left with the mess to clean up, the insurance companies to deal with, and not to mention all the memories, the precious memories that are lost in the flood. You can never replace those. And Aquadam can be a tool in your arsenal to protect your home and property from the floodwaters. The coffer dam is filled with water to control water and is reusable as long as it's taken care of. It can protect your home or business from rising flood waters like a dam, but without the beavers. It can also be used in construction. If you need an area to be dewatered, an aqua dam can do the job. An aqua dam was used at SeaWorld in Orlando for the Mako roller coaster ride during the coaster's construction by dewatering the work area. An aqua dam is now dewatering the work area at San Antonio SeaWorld for their newest roller coaster ride. An aqua dam has been used in many construction projects all around the U.S. and all around the world. Now give aqua dam a call, 707-764-2119. You can look them up online at aquadam.net. You can find them on Facebook at Aquadam Inc. You call them up, you email them, you tell them Ed Opperman sent you, and they're going to take 10% off the price. Aquadam.net, 707-764-2119. It's the Opperman Report. Join digital forensic investigator and PI Ed Opperman for an in-depth discussion of conspiracy theories, strategy of New World Order resistance, high-profile court cases in the news, and interviews with expert guests and authors on these topics and more. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman. You can find me at uh, Opperman Investigations and Digital <coughs> Forensic Consulting uh, through my website, emailrevealer.com, or just email me directly at oppermaninvestigations at gmail.com. If you like our show today, check out the members section. I just put up three new shows up there, uh, mostly talking about Epstein stuff and Maxwell stuff uh, at uh, oppermanreport.com. Uh, three new shows we just put up there exclusively in the members section. There's about 250 shows in there totally. 
Um, and also, too, uh, our archives are free. You can always find the archives for free at Spreaker.com, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. And it would be a good idea to go there to take a moment right now and go there and sign up to Spreaker for free because you never know. The show can go off the air at any moment, okay? You know, people, a lot of people tune in every night, 10 p.m., 9 p.m., and uh, you know, say, oh, you know, you make it a nightly routine. Uh, one day, the, the, the radio business is fickle. And we may not always be on the air, so Spreaker would be a good place to, to hook up with us for life. The book we're going to be talking about today is fascinating. Okay, it's called Healing with Psychedelics, and uh, the author is a man named Dr. Chris Becker. Uh, and you can find his website at chrisbecker.org, and he wants to, to point your attention to a, a YouTube video on there. He did a, a YouTube interview on there one time that uh, he's very proud of. Dr. Becker, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you, Ed, for having me. Yeah, thank you so much. Fascinating topic, healing with psychedelics. Uh, before we get into the topic of the book, can you tell us about yourself? Who is Dr. Chris Becker? Right. Uh, yeah, well, um, I'm in my 60s. I recently retired from uh, a long uh, career in science. I'm a, a PhD kind of doctor, uh, a chemist by training, and um, <clears throat> I also got into business and uh, founded a couple of uh, companies. Uh, the most recent one is still going along very well. And um, so I've had a lot of experience in my life, including uh, uh, I'm in my third marriage, which we might even get into, a couple of kids who are very uh, well-adjusted, healthy uh, young adults. And uh, so a lot of experience, uh, uh, as they say, water under the bridge for me. So I'm somebody who's uh, it's really been around the block, as as uh, we may say, and um, uh, but I've had a lot of uh, blind spots, uh, you might uh, say, and uh, we'll talk about that, uh, which uh, you know, <clears throat> which brings us to the book. But uh, so uh, kind of a real thumbnail sketch is, uh, you know, from the professional point of view, uh, a scientist, businessman, uh, recently retired, and uh, enjoying uh, life out in California. But from reading your biography, it also seems that you've been on a spiritual journey through your whole life of Buddhism and meditation and stuff. Right. So um, I got excited about uh, Zen, Zen Buddhism back in the 70s. It was, it was uh, in the air. It was a cultural thing going on. Um, a lot of, you know, New Age excitement after the Summer of Love. And um, I read some books, got excited in it, and after... A while before I uh, mustered up enough courage to actually really uh, get in the pool, uh, I started to do uh, uh, what we call Zen meditation. So that was back in, uh, I started that around the mid-70s, 1970s. And uh, <clears throat> so I stuck with it. I had, a, had some years off. I really didn't practice. But mostly uh, since that time, I've been a practicing meditator. So um I've had uh, the opportunity to see, uh, you know, what meditation is, and people talk about it, and they go, well, what is it, really? You just sit in there, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, um, I've had an opportunity to, to, to see what meditation is and how it can uh, actually have a positive influence in your life, and at the same time, uh, what limitations uh, there are. So uh, I would say that my life has been um, one of... Uh, a spiritual journey. I, I think it is for a lot of us. We, in one shape or form, we wonder about the world. How did we get here? How, what are we doing in this body? How did that happen? And um, try to understand uh, that and, you know, what our role here on earth is. So uh, that's a spiritual journey. And uh, yeah, I've definitely been uh, one of those people who have been aware of it, you know, struggled with, you know, what it means and how I got, get to, you know, from A to B. But um uh, my life, I would say, has been a spiritual journey. Now, I've been dabbling lately in some guided meditations that you can find on Facebook and uh, on YouTube, you know, and, and I've been uh, enjoying it. Uh, then I, I've also heard about this uh, retreat you can go to in Northern California. You go, it's like for free. You go there for like a week, you know, you're, and, uh, it's vegetarian and it's a silent meditation. You, you have to meditate every day silently where you focus on your breathing and your heartbeat and stuff like that. What type of meditation are you uh, involved in? Well, uh, I would say it'd be very similar uh, to what you just uh, described, Ed. Um, probably uh, 
I'm guessing what you're describing, people, the, the name they would give to it would be insight meditation. Mm. Uh, it's a, it's a, you know, all this stuff. It's a basically Buddhist uh, based, and uh, of course Buddhism, just like other like uh, Christianity and whatever, have different schools and traditions within that um, umbrella. And um, so the meditation I do is really very similar to it. In, in fact, uh, uh, almost the same or a little bit varied. I'd, I'd say maybe a little bit varied because um, I would say for most people, uh, when they starting to get into meditation, it's good to have something to, uh, to focus on. And uh, in fact, uh, in the vernacular, we call it focused attention a meditation, which you described, which is uh, focusing on the breath which is a wonderful, wonderful place to focus. It's always there for us. It's calming, it's centering. Um, and uh, so that's a, that's a great place to, to uh, do your meditation. And, uh, but it's not the only way to do it. Um, and sometimes, although it's an excellent way to begin, uh, sometimes after you're more experienced, you can uh, kind of loosen the reins a little bit and, um, let your mind go uh, as a kind of drift, uh, maybe like a cloud in the sky. Uh, there's other um, types that uh, go under the name of open monitoring uh, meditation, or in Chinese there's a word called shikantaza, which translates to just sitting, which means you're not trying to do anything. You're just observing uh, what the mind is doing. And you might observe the breath, you might observe sensations in your body, you might observe uh, spiritual light, you might observe um, uh, emotional issues, emotions that come up, uh, thoughts, uh, but you don't really um, play with them, you just observe them. Mm. And so that's another style, maybe a little bit more advanced for people, but it's a, it's a natural uh, continuum of uh, types of meditation. Now, in the notes you sent over, you describe your own personal journey. Um, your own personal healing journey that uh, you were experiencing some kind of issues. Right. Um, so, um, yeah, I think a lot of us, uh, you know, walking around have um, some some issues, right? And uh, in fact, I would say that most of us, in fact. There's even uh, uh, scientific research, uh, as I mentioned in my book. Uh, you can even go to the CDC. People hear about the CDC Center for Disease Control now with the COVID, um, but they also have part of their website. They talk about uh, research that they've done where people, uh, when they were children, experienced uh, uh, bad stuff. Bad stuff happened to them, and it can be all shapes and forms. Uh, some can be really horrific, you know, people can be beaten or, or raped and molested, but also it can be very subtle things like um, behavior correction, like, uh, you know, you're only like really uh, loved if you do act a certain way, or you maybe have a mother who's kind of absent or depressed, maybe she's depressed, or maybe she's needy, she's at you all the time, asking you to do stuff and filling her needs. There can be all kinds of things that really can affect us deeply. Well, I have my share. We can talk a little bit about that. And uh, but they're but like most people, they're kind of hidden for view. Uh, we make these kind of defense mechanisms when we're little, um, and it's a natural and a good thing because it protects us, so we can keep going. But uh, it gets in the way of life as we get older. And um, in my case, my particular case, I had uh, well various. Uh, symptoms, you might call. Uh, the most obvious one was uh, drinking alcohol and uh, smoking pot. Mm. I like to do both of those. Um, and um, especially the on and off with the pot, but pretty, pretty much on, and then the alcohol pretty much on until, for like a lot of people, uh, you, you hit a bump in the road. And a bump in the road, for a lot of us, can be all kinds of things, like somebody... Uh, like a relationship breakup, or uh, somebody dies, or a car accident, or a, a serious illness, cancer, or you know whatever, we get some big bump in the road that kind of wakes us up. And um, in my case, um, 
it was my wife who was having a conversation with my brother, and they said uh, to each other, basically, you know, he's he's drinking too much, and you know, we ought to really try to stop it. So they both talked to me and asked me to quit drinking alcohol. I was drinking about a bottle of wine a night would be kind of the average, maybe a little more on the weekend. And um, and it was, and I was functional. I went to work. I never drank on the job. I, I did my job. I was successful at it. But uh, it was impacting my life in a lot of ways that I was in denial, uh, denying about, uh, you know, impacting how I related to my wife, why I had been through two divorces before. Um, and um, so it's not just... Uh, Alcohol is one symptom, but there's other symptoms like more subtle ones, like how you relate to people and uh, how intimate you can be and whether uh, fear is contaminating your relationship, some deep fear from childhood. So um, so I got a bump in the road. My wife and brother really came at me and said, you got to stop. So that was uh, I very reluctantly. It's, it's, it's difficult. Um to do that because, you know, this is like self-medication, uh, mm. the drinking. It does something good. It makes you feel normal. It makes you feel warm and and healthy and normal, even though it's not a healthy thing to do. So it's, that's kind of the nature of uh, addictions. And, and the kind of addictions can be overeating. It can be addicted to your sports team or fast cars. It can be addicted to... Uh, yoga even. Uh, yoga is normally a healthy thing, but if you're just like fascinated and can't get enough of it, and you know, that can be addiction. Things that are, take you away from the present moment. Things that take you away from other people and yourself. So, those are all kinds of addictions. So, anyway, I got a bump in the road. I got a wake-up call. People might use that phrase. Um, and, uh, so I said, okay, I'll try, and no, no guarantees. Uh, and so um, my brother in particular would say, well, what's your plan? How are you going to do it? Because if you just white knuckle it, uh, you know, uh, everybody knows that probably won't work. You know, you'll just relapse. And so I said, okay, well, let me think about it. And um, I had come across this book that uh, is very popular, still popular book, by, uh, written by Michael Pollan called How to Change Your Mind, a uh, bestseller, New York Times bestseller book. And in that book, um, he talks about the use of psychedelics for healing people. And uh, there's different parts of the book. He talks about the history of it and all the uh, many, many psychological studies back, especially in the 1950s and 60s. And, of course, if you look back in uh, history, it's been used for millennia in, uh, in different indigenous cultures, even in Europe, if you go back far enough. And um, it's just a natural part of our world. So anyway, back around 1970 or so, they had the war on drugs. They had Timothy Leary talking about drop in and drop out. And, oh, the alarm bells went off in society. And so everything got... Uh, it got made illegal, even things that just grow naturally, like uh, magic mushrooms. But um, so anyway, so uh, get back to my story. So I read this book and I thought, well, you know, um, uh, I'll try this because so it looks interesting. And when I was in my 20s, I was experimenting back in the 70s. I was experimenting, you know, with some of these substances like a lot of college age uh, uh, people do. So I had a little bit of an affinity uh, or comfort level with the idea. So I looked online and um, uh, Googled around, you know, searched, and I came across an essay that was written by a guy who was a therapist in San Francisco, which is not too far from where I live. And um, he, uh, he spoke very uh, knowledgeably and intelligently uh, about uh, psychedelic-assisted therapy, not making any fantastic claims, but was very balanced uh, about his views, and also he's licensed, very well-trained uh, professional psychotherapist, and I thought, well, you know, I'd give this guy a call, and maybe I'll start some therapy with him, and um, so that was the path I did, and I was kind of excited to try uh, uh, psychedelic-assisted therapy, and he said, uh, well, you know, maybe we can do that, but... Uh, 
why don't we uh, pump the brakes a little bit here? Let's uh, let's just do some basic talk therapy for a bit and kind of uncover some things, get a handle on, uh, you know, what's been driving uh, your behavior, what, you know, what's been making you tick. And so we did that for a few months, uh, which is really a short time. And, you know, people, a lot of people think about psychotherapy is going on for years. So that's one aspect that these things can go um, relatively quickly. But after a few months, he said, okay, I'll, I'll refer you to somebody who does this in the U.S., somebody in the, in the Bay Area, it turns out, so it wasn't far away from me. And uh, that's how I got into uh, the path of um, using psychedelics as, as not the primary thing, but as an assistance, like they say, psychedelic-assisted uh, therapy. So that's... Uh, that's uh, kind of a long uh, story, but that's how I got started on that path. Well, well let, let me ask you this, because you said you had experimented with L- uh, hallucinogenic psychedelics, I'm assuming it was LSD, right, uh, back in the 70s. Uh, what made you stop? Uh, well, that's a good question. I, well, first of all, I experimented. I, I read the Carlos Castaneda books back in the 70s, and that got a lot of young people like myself excited, and I tried peyote which is a cactus that contains mescaline. I also did some LSD. Uh, what else did I do <laughs> <laughs> back in the day? Uh, I think one mushroom trip, which was a little too potent for me at the time. Um, what made me stop? Well, um, I don't know. I think I, I think maybe the career, you know, I, was, I went to graduate school to get a PhD. It was a lot of intense work and then to start a family. And I guess I had kind of reached um, kind of like, uh, you know, kind of as far as you can go in that setting, which was an immature setting, and there's no guide, and there's no, there's no culture, there's no um, a big uh, view about what you're trying to do spiritually, and uh, so I, I kind of like, you know, I got, I got busy, uh, busy may be a good word, you know, school, and then career, and then family, and then kids, and so I think that's what made me stop. Yeah, and full disclosure, I, I've used it too as well. You know, I've used uh, mushrooms and LSD, mescaline, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, back again in the '70s, myself, I'm 58 years old in September. I'll be 58, and and but I stopped, um, and I was even selling it too. I was buying it from Manhattan. I was selling it back in uh, Staten Island, uh, large amounts, and I stopped because of a very bad experience I had one night on it, and I felt that it was so bad that I not only did I stop, but I encouraged other people I know that were selling it to stop as well. So, but you have never had a bad experience. Well, no, I'm glad, I'm glad you, you brought yeah. that up, Ed, because it reminds me of, um, and this may be a little bit more to the point, but it's very much like yours. I think, you know, it's a long time ago now, but my memory serves me is that the last one, the last one of these trips I took uh, was the only one I took with mushrooms. Hmm. And um, I was in Mexico traveling with a friend, and uh, we, we were at this place south of Oaxaca in southern Mexico, where uh, the hippies uh, knew that uh, the magic mushrooms grew. So we uh, uh, we got some, we went to this town, uh, you know, took a bus outside of Oaxaca, got to this town and then uh, bought some from some guy on a dirt road and um, took them down to the beach, put them in honey to preserve them. So these are fresh, not dried uh, mushrooms. Uh, we were very naive at the time. Uh, like we didn't even weigh them. I <laughs> still to this day have no idea how much we took, but I think it was probably more, <laughs> more than we should have. Um, but uh, that was a very uh, a tough, bad trip, and I think that was uh, it. it kind of taught me a lesson. Uh, like was basically, uh, it was like the, you know, if you think about it, a lot of people look at the, uh, them as, as medicine and as teachers, as uh, earth teachers. Uh, basically, it was giving me a lesson like, hey, you don't know what you're doing. You're not ready for this. Uh, and so um, you're going to you're gonna have an experience that uh, will uh, bring that point home to you. And so, I, you know, it was a bad trip on the beach down in southern Mexico. It ended okay, but uh, I, I think I got my ass kicked, basically, in the trip. And that probably was the last one I took. Yeah, usually when you talk to people who've stopped, it was because of a bad experience. And, and I know, uh, especially nowadays, too, these, these young girls who uh, uh, get into LSD, and L- they 
it seems to fry their brain in a way uh, that they, they really don't recover from. But I guess this is large doses of, of serious daily, you know, uh, LSD, people who really, really get uh, obsessed with it. Now, uh, what do you make of that then? What, you know, um, well, I think, uh, uh, yeah, I'm not, uh, I don't think of these substances as, as addictive, although some people overdo it, right? Yeah. And maybe that's that's kind of an addiction of its source. They have an addictive addictive uh, personality like myself that it manifests different ways and they get into something that you know for some reason grabs a hold of them and um these kind of these kind of things like lsd and magic mushrooms or whatever they an uh, mdma is especially an important one to consider in this regard because it's been used as a party drug um they're not they're not good for you if you to take them a lot that's not really how they should be used, and uh, they can hurt you. They can, like you said, fry your brain, make yeah. you, uh, make you uh, even induce psychosis in some people. Uh, so it's, um, it's, uh, you know, I think that one of the big messages I have about this, especially having done psych- uh, psychedelics in my twenties, and I never did it in that way, like every day kind of stuff. But having done it in my twenties and sixties, is that. Um, um, you have to have a lot of respect for these uh, medicines and do it with somebody who's actually trained, uh, like a guide slash therapist who can help you work out uh, you know, issues that you have, that we all have. Um, and by trained, I don't mean like if they took a six weeks uh, correspondence course. I mean, somebody who's maybe been trained for two or more years in this field, uh, knows uh, knows how to work with people in on uh, journeys, and also knows psychotherapy. Really knows how to work with people. So those, that's what I would. That's one of my primary messages: is that um, that that's how uh, that's the healthy way. Um, and I know a lot of young people that are really in the do-it-yourself yeah. mode. I get, I get that, uh, but uh, that's still the message I would like to convey: that this is really the healthy and healing and a and, uh, way to, um, to bring about really good uh, health for, your, for yourself and also for all the people around you. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I just remembered, I was talking to a young lady today, about 20 years old, or maybe 21, around that age, and um, I said, oh yeah, today I'm interviewing this doctor who uses uh, um, hallucinogens, uh, psychedelics to treat depression. And she said, oh my God, bless his heart. Uh, because, you know, I use it myself to treat my bipolar and my depression, my manic phase and stuff like that. But like, you know, she's self-medicating, you know, which is something we don't want to encourage. Now, a couple of questions for you. Now, uh, you say you, you abstain from alcohol now, correct? Right. I haven't had any for about two years. What about marijuana? Because that's in this hallucinogenic field as well. Do you do participate in marijuana? No, I don't. Okay. I'm and totally... Why uh, you know, because I was using it in the same way right. as alcohol, as kind of as an escape. And so uh, I just decided, uh, you know, at the beginning, of course, I didn't know what was going to happen, how it was all going to unfold. But after a while, uh, with the therapy, is I realized that the craving went away. I just didn't, never felt like I needed it. Yeah, marijuana, the same thing for me. It started making me feel very paranoid. I wasn't enjoying it, and I was just smoking all the time. And uh, I'm glad I stopped, you know. I'm, and although I, when they legalize it in, in Vegas, I did go back and try a couple of times, I have to admit. You know, but uh, it, it's, uh, it's just not uh, for me anymore. Now, what about mm-hmm. ayahuasca? Well, ayahuasca, I, I've only tried once, mm. uh, and fairly recently, just to, to try to try to understand, you know, what different medicines do. Uh, it's it's pretty popular. I don't know exactly how popular, but I know it's pretty popular. You hear a lot of people talk about it. Um, it's a powerful uh, uh, hallucinogen or psychedelic, maybe a better word, because you don't really hallucinate. That's not the best word, but. Um, mm. Uh, a lot of people say different things about it, uh, including like, oh, it's so much more powerful than mushrooms and whatever, but I'm, I'm pretty experienced now, so I, and I know, and I'm a chemist by training, so and I also know the structure of these molecules, they're very, very similar between, uh, you know, mushrooms and ayahuasca, the molecules are. Uh, my experience is pretty much the same experience, which was powerful, it depends on the dose, right? All these things are dose dependent. Uh, the only difference about ayahuasca is it has this poison in it, 
Mm. <laughs> it's a kind of a body poison, not enough to like kill you. Well, I, I suppose if you had enough of it, but under normal doses, it's not going to make you, it's not going to kill you, but it makes you kind of sick, right? And uh, that's a known thing about ayahuasca. It makes you kind of, kind of wretch, maybe puke a little, or or even if you're, or dry heaves or whatever. So it's got that, but it's got a, it's a funny thing, uh, ayahuasca, this, this uh, retching or whatever, because it's done in a, it's done on this journey, um, you know, so it has a, has a pure, purifying feeling to it. So it's not, um, so it has some positive aspect, even though maybe from a physiological uh, uh, perspective, it's uh, you know not a good thing. But anyway, um, my, my experience is limited, but I think I had a, from my one experience, I had a pretty good handle on it. And uh, I have respect for it, like all these medicines. And, um, um, and so anyway, that's my, uh, that's my quick uh, take on ayahuasca. Well, real quick, before we take a commercial break, uh, do, do, was your dosage that you took, I guess you took it here up in the States, is, is that the same as these people go down to South America and they, they, these shamans are, are chanting with them and, and giving them these huge doses from what I understand? Uh, yeah, I think so. The guy who really gave it to me was trained. He, he spent two years in the uh, jungles of Peru, so wow. he's very well... Uh, not just versed in it, but also trained in, you know, administering it. And um, and we talked about dose, and all, like I said before, all these things are dose dependent. Mm -hmm. And uh, but he gave me a, a what you would call a full dose, um, like just as I would, and I would call these therapeutic doses. They're pretty strong. Um, they're not for partying. Uh, you don't go to the to the concert with doses like this. Uh, they're for healing. Um, but the ones I the one I took with ayahuasca was uh, like a full he called a full strength. Gotcha. Okay, let's take a little commercial break. We're with Dr. Chris Becker. As a matter of fact, you know, one of the guys I used to get high with when I was a kid was named Chris Becker. It's uh, <laughs> from Stanford. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I'm not going to forget your name, Chris Becker. Uh, and the book, is, the book is called Healing with Psychedelics. Fascinating topic. You don't really hear people talking about this. And when we get uh, back from the break, we're going to talk about what the therapy is like, what the therapeutic dosage is, what's the, uh, the treatment like, and, uh, and, and how it, the specifics on that. Uh, we'll be right back with more of uh, Dr. Chris Becker. You can find his website at chrisbecker.org. And also, to the book is called Healing with Psychedelics. You can find it on Amazon.com. We'll be right back after these messages. And now, a word from our sponsors. If you find yourself in need of legal representation, it can be a very stressful time in your life. In my career, I have dealt with thousands of lawyers. I've dealt with thousands of law firms. And I can confidently recommend to you Keith M. Davidson at kmdlaw.com. Available 24 hours, seven days a week. Just log into kmdlaw.com. That's kmdlaw.com. Or you can call toll-free 833-4-KMD-LAW. That's 833-4-KMD-LAW. Personal injury, wrongful death, STDs, sexual assault, car accidents. They handle it all efficiently and professionally. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be because the team at kmdlaw.com are battle-tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Go to kmdlaw.com or call toll-free 833-4-KMD-LAW. If you're in for the fight of your life, stop screwing around and contact KMD Law. Are you ready to change your life but don't know how to start? Is your stress and worries keeping you awake at night? Have you been battling grief, anxiety, or depression all alone? Have you lost touch with your own sense of being or spirituality? Soul Free Therapies offers professional and affordable live video streaming counseling and coaching services from the comfort of your own home. Sessions offered in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Go to our website at www.soul-free.com and book your first session today. The Opperman Report is brought to you by Aquadam.net. You can give them a call at 707-764-2119. A flooded home is never easy to deal with. You're left with the mess to clean up, the insurance companies to deal with, and not to mention all the memories, the precious memories that are lost in the flood. You can never replace those. And Aquadam can be a tool in your arsenal to protect your home and property from the floodwaters. The coffer dam is filled with water to control water and is reusable as long as it's taken care of. It can protect your home or business from rising floodwaters like a dam, but without the beavers. It can also be used in construction. 
If you need an area to be dewatered, an aqua dam can do the job. An aqua dam was used at SeaWorld in Orlando for the Mako roller coaster ride during the coaster's construction by dewatering the work area. An aqua dam is now dewatering the work area at San Antonio SeaWorld for their newest roller coaster ride. An aqua dam has been used in many construction projects all around the U.S. and all around the world. Now give aqua dam a call, 707-764-2119. You can look them up online at aquadam.net. You can find them on Facebook at Aquadam Inc. You call them up, you email them, you tell them Ed Opperman sent you, and they're going to take 10% off the price. Aquadam.net, 707-764-2119. PureSoapFlakes.com, 218-568-2525. Have you ever heard of Castile Soap? Pure Soap Flake Company handcrafts fine soap bars, laundry powder, and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern Minnesota facility. Bathe your body and wash your clothes with pure soap products that are free of fragrance, GMOs, palm oil, sodium lauryl sulfate, and synthetic additives. Keep it clean, folks. Pure Soap Flake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. They have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opperman Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to sing a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars, and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. I've been using that stuff all day long today. Great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call. 218-568-2525. 218-568-2525. Pure Soap Flake Company is a proud member of the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is Investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome back to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, Private Investigator Ed Opperman. We're talking today with Dr. Chris Becker. He's written this fascinating book. This is a fascinating topic, man. for me at least. I don't know. Uh, it's hard to guess what the audience likes anymore. <laughs> Healing with psychedelics. Dr. Becker, describe to us what a typical... How do you, how do you use this uh, to heal uh, people with depression, addiction? And what other things can you heal with this? Uh, right. Uh, and also, uh, your listeners should know that um, uh, a lot of this work is underground, but a lot of it is also now um, in uh, FDA-approved clinical trials. So, um, and, and if you, there's even a government, government website called uh, clinicaltrials.gov, and you can do searches uh, like for psilocybin or MDMA, and you can see all kinds of all kinds of uh, clinical trials. I think there were 80 amazing number uh, between those two compounds um, that are uh, ongoing or recently completed. But uh, anyway, um, how do, uh, back to your question. Um, how do you remind me? Uh, how do you how do you do these things, or how do you take the therapy? Yeah, like what would what does the therapy process consist of? Right. So um, the very the very basics of it are. Um, you have to work with somebody. Um, it's a therapist, somebody who's trained in in uh, psychotherapy of one type or another, and including working with people under, um, you know, therapeutic doses of these uh, uh, these powerful medicines. And so um, there's talk therapy involved. People should know that it's not like uh, you you meet somebody and boom you do it and that's it goodbye. Um, it's in the it's embedded in part of a psychotherapy program. So that means um, uh, you do some talk therapy first. Uh, part of it is you have to build a relationship with the person because mm. you have to really trust this person. You're going to be in a vulnerable state. Um, you're going to be working on a lot of emotional issues. And in order for the therapy to be effective, you have to trust the person. And uh, they also in your the place you're at, you have to feel safe in it. You can't feel like, uh, you know, somebody's going to open the door and, uh, you know, the, you know, whatever. And um, uh, so you do some talk therapy to begin with, and that could be uh, depends on the situation. Uh, in some of these, uh, whether it be legally approved or underground, it might be just a few sessions to get to know each other, talk about what issues you want to work on. Or it could be maybe you work with a year, you know, for a year if you really need to work. Uh, sometimes I've heard <clears throat> guys say that, you know, somebody will come in and they want to do this work and they realize this person's not stable yet. Uh, so they may, it may take a year before they have uh, a talk therapy before the guide feels that they're ready. Um, so it depends on the situation. In my case, uh, like I said, it was a few months with uh, one guy who's a licensed therapist, and then he handed me over 
then it was another month or two uh, with the guide therapist before I did my first journey. And um, so after the journey, uh, also uh, you have to do follow-up, uh, uh, we call it integration. So like how do you, you have to build that experience into your life. Um, so it's not just, oh, you did it and it's over and like, well, I got nothing out of it. So you really want to embed that into your, into your psyche, into your life. And so uh, I think two key words uh, we have are um, intentions. That's like before the journey, like what are you working on? What are the issues you want to work on? Uh, your, your psychological issues, your, your past, maybe past trauma, uh, your relationship with uh, you know, your mother, your brother, you know, whatever. Maybe you were in a car accident or you were on a battlefield or whatever. Um, and... Um, um, so those are intentions, and then following the journey, you do integration to build that into your psyche to make it a part of you. So it's not a, just a one-off, and it's all over. And then um, for some people, usually there's uh, there can be more than one journey. Sometimes one's enough for people what they're trying to do. Sometimes just a couple, two or three, uh, or even sometimes people more. They do more. They go deeper. Some of those people like myself, who's done more, not a huge number more, but more, have been sort of on that spiritual path and trying to open up uh, their uh, understanding, our understanding of um, our, our spiritual nature, what this world is from a spiritual point of view. So, but I think the, to summarize it quickly, Ed, is that uh, at least in the, the practice that I, that I know and recommend, and also that it's uh, bordering uh, close to legal um, it's done in the context of a trained uh, therapist who uh, really helps you work with um, issues that are, you know, that are in front of you. You mentioned real quick um, that uh, the setting, the location is very important. Where do you uh, do your therapy sessions? Right. Um, the, the phrase that is, is in the community is set and setting. Set means your mindset, um, like, you know, you ha your intentions, your you're, you're, you're taking this seriously, you're, you're planning it, you're coming to it uh, with a trusting a presence with your guide and a safe, and then the safe setting. Setting is the actual physical location you're at. And um, I've been in a couple uh, settings. Uh, one has been in a safe house, in a room in a safe house, uh, where um, the setting is also, this is also very introspective. So if, even if it's daytime and there's light in the room, you wear eye shades, so eye covering. So it's uh, you know, so it's all black, and it's and you lie down on a on a uh, like for what I've done, it's like a, a little mattress on the floor, um, and covers if you need, uh, on a, with a pillow, with the eye shades on, and um, the guide might uh, might play some music that are is appropriately chosen for uh, this the uh, situation. Um, but I've also done it outside in uh, Redwood Forest, hmm. uh, which is, has a different feel to it, um, a beautiful feel to it, uh, maybe without music or much music. Um, and um, so you can have different settings, but I think the key thing is that they feel comfortable, you, you feel safe. Uh, we talk about uh, another word we use sometimes is a container. You feel like you're in a safe container. Everything you don't have to worry about other things. You just you're able to turn in inside into your mind, into your you know your experience, uh, your body and your mind, and uh, not worry about external events. Not worry about the person you're with. They're there to support you. They'll be there. Maybe they'll interact with you a little bit, but they're not in your face. Um, and um, so that's uh, set, set and setting. Okay, a couple of questions. Are they tripping too? Are the people with you? Generally not. Okay, no, they're that's interesting. Going sober. Okay. Now, um, did you ever see that movie, The Trip, with uh, um, Jack Nicholson and uh, Peter Fonda? Uh, I don't think so, but I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it now. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I forget who the third actor is in there. I, I can't remember his name. I think Drew something, another famous actor from the period of time. And it's it, very much like you described with the eye shades and the whole thing, uh, very uh, realistic in many ways. Then it gets a little far fetched toward the end. I guess it's going on panic attack, <laughs> running around town going crazy. Um, 
Mm-hmm. But fascinating now because I can see when because when you are on these psychedelics, you do make these wow. You have these aha moments, these introspective uh, uh, um, realizations about your life, and oh, now it all makes sense. And unless you have someone there documenting and writing this down, the next day you don't remember. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Right. So, so, go ahead. No, go ahead. You go ahead. Well, yeah. So um, not everybody does this, I know, but um, uh, my my guy does it, and it's pretty common. He'll he'll have a notepad there, and you know, when I say something, that he'll write it down, uh, and we'll talk about that later in integration. And uh, also, sometimes he'll prompt prompt you. A lot of times, you know, he'll just let you go, you know, because you're exploring things in your mind and your feelings. But every now and then, if you're quiet for a while, he might come over or she might come over and say, how are you doing? You know, where, where are you at now? It kind of, uh, you know, prompt you to say a little bit so that it can be useful later, uh, useful later to, uh, um, uh, you know, to integrate, to, to understand, you know, your process. Have you looked into the history of uh, the creation of LSD and like how many of the people, the uh, advocates for it, like Timothy Leary, were government agents and uh, uh, sponsored by military and CIA and stuff? Have you looked into that history? Um, well, I, I, you know, um, I know some of it. And Michael Pollan's book is is uh, really good in that regard. He gives you kind of a a review. There was like a thousand actually scientific papers published mm. on LSD, primarily LSD, I think. Uh, maybe some other substances, uh, some maybe psilocybin too, um, and um, back in the 50s and 60s. And um, yeah, I mean, a lot of psychiatrists were really excited about it uh, before it got all shut down. In fact, I think uh, in Michael Pollan's book, uh, he mentions that um, I think the state of Saskatchewan in Canada actually had it as official uh, treatment for alcoholism. Yeah. Um, and um, so it's, it's you know, the psychiatrist, I, and I knew one uh, who's passed away, but he was a, 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 a really wonderful psychiatrist. He told me that he took it in the 50s, you know, as part of these people were exploring, you know, because uh, if you're in that field, you want to know what helps people. And um, in the right situation, right, um, it can help people, really. And... Um, then you know it got all crazy uh, with the drug you know, war on drugs and a lot of misinformation. People were they, you know misinformation like oh they're all jumping out of windows and mm. all this stuff and um, so yeah so um, anyway yeah there's a long history uh, of that and and then also I think it's it's worth people knowing and and considering that these things have been used. Uh, in human culture, going back thousands of years, they've been, they and they haven't been wild and crazy. You know, they haven't been using them to go to concerts. They've been using them. There'd be a shaman or some elder who would do it in a very controlled way uh, for people who needed it, or in the right in, maybe an initiation, or they were having some psychological problems. They would use it. Uh, so there's a. It's only in the last 50 years that it's been called. Uh, uh, you know, illegal or something that's uh, bad. And but there is a renaissance now. And like I mentioned, a lot of the FDA approved trials and a lot of uh, underground uh, activity growing, uh, and and a buzz in the culture uh, that these things can be helpful medicines. Yeah, my old friends back in New York uh, are heavily involved in ergotamine uh, treatment of heroin at addiction. Are you familiar with that? Ergotamine. Ergotamine. Um, yeah. I mean, I think of ergot with the LSD, but I'm not sure I know the word ergotamine, so help me out. Well, well look it up. Ergotamine, ergotamine is the way I believe it's pronounced, uh, uh, treatment of heroin addiction. Uh, and the guys mm-hmm. uh, from New York are, are heavily into that and been advocating since the 70s uh, the use of this treatment of a heroin addiction. And I, I know some of the people that were treated with this, and it was successful. Now, uh-huh. you've used so many different uh, substances. What do you use? What do you find the most effective in, in your therapy sessions? Well, the, the therapy in uh, here in my uh, 60s that uh, I was introduced with, which is part of a, a culture, um, and that uh, is, um, 
it's fairly prescribed. There, I'm sure there are exceptions to it, but they, they like to start off therapy with um, uh, maybe two journeys, one or two journeys with MDMA, mm. and then followed up with uh, um, uh, magic mushrooms, psilocybin mushrooms. And the MDMA is, um, fairly, all these things are fairly potent doses, therapeutic doses, although they oftentimes start a little bit low just to kind of see how the person's going to do with it. Um, but MDMA is a very uh, heart-opening uh, drug. Uh, it can open up your emotions and your empathy for other people and also yourself. And um, it's a very good way to start a therapy. It's, a very, it's kind of a soft, uh, like I said, heart opening is really a nice way to describe it and uh, kind of maybe, you know, lower your defenses, lower your anxiety, increase your feeling of love for yourself and for others. So it's a good way to start. And then a lot of times people will go on to uh, magic mushrooms where it's a little bit, a uh, little bit a bumpier road, but they can um, bring out a lot of things that are hidden in your psyche that uh, maybe MDMA cannot do that so well. So though, you know, we know we have these things back in our unconscious that maybe haunt us, make us behave in certain ways, make us react in certain ways. And the mushrooms can be very good to help bring that out and clean that out, um, bring that up to the conscious level where it can be worked on. I know you don't use marijuana yourself, but do you? Would you uh, suggest it for others uh, on this journey with using these different kinds of psychedelics? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I know a lot of people speak highly of it, so I want to be careful in how I answer the question. I don't find it necessary. Mm. Um, I know that some people speak well of it. Um, so um, you know, I try to be maybe a little more neutral, but uh, I'm not. Um, since I use it in sort of an addictive way, I have pretty much uh, I, don't, I pretty much want a hands off kind of perspective, I guess. Okay, and and one of the questions that came over in the notes here was about the, do you believe that magic mushrooms or psychedelics should be legalized for the general public? Uh, that's a really big question, and, um, and so let me break the answer down into a couple parts because uh, just to say yes or no is really not a, mm. a, a good a good answer. Uh, first of all, they actually are legal in some cases, and, and inter very interesting in uh, some churches, uh, like uh, Native American Church has a legal status for the use of peyote, which is mescaline-containing cactus, and I think it's Santo Daini Church uh, uses ayahuasca legally, and this is in the U.S. I'm talking. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, elsewhere, in some places, it's legal, more, more openly legal. Uh, so that's interesting, just, you know, why in those in religious contexts it's legal. But that's a whole different, bigger topic. Uh, and then there are these FDA clinical trials, which uh, I know at least one of them is phase three now, which means it may become uh, legal with prescription. And it's done in a therapy session. You have to have a licensed therapist work with you, um, you know, with some therapy before and after. Uh, that's with MDMA, but there are also clinical trials with psilocybin. And so I think most people think that what I hear is those trials are going well. Uh, there are a lot of positive results, and people expect at least some of them to be approved. And so, you know, within the next few years, I think you'll see more of these things, MDMA and psilocybin, become legally available in the United States uh, with prescription. And um, in general, I don't recommend... My personal feeling is I don't recommend legalization like marijuana has been legalized because just the kind of way our system is, you know, capitalism and all people are out there to make money. Yeah. And so they'll, they'll end up pushing it on people who really shouldn't be using it, shouldn't be using it in a unsupervised manner, and I think that can hurt people. So, But I do think it should be decriminalized. I don't think anybody should be going to jail because they have ma magic mushrooms. So that's kind of a kind of long, uh, a little bit long-winded answer to uh, your question about legalization. Yeah, and the sentencing for, for like, possession of LSD is just a, a really intense, like 10 years plus. Uh, Dr. Chris Becker, thank you so much. You can find him at chrisbecker.org, and the book is called Healing with Psychedelics. You can find it at uh, amazon.com, uh, but also, too, at, on your my website, too, as well, right, uh, chrisbecker.org? Right. 
Thank you so much. Thank you, Ed. Good night. And now a word from our sponsors. OppermanReport.com. Hey, do you like what you're hearing? Do you like the work that you see us doing here at Opperman Report? You can support that work by becoming a member at OppermanReport.com. And as you have access to over 200 exclusive shows and interviews that you can't find on YouTube or Spreaker or iHeart or iTunes or KYAH, you can't find them anywhere else online, exclusive to our member sections, to our members. Also, too, there's images, videos, documents, court docs. And don't forget, you can hear your ad played here on the Opera and Report. Reach hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people on a daily basis because the show is repeated every day all over the world. Contact me at operandreport at gmail.com and I'll give you a good deal on advertising rates. Have you ever thought about opening your own mobile card or kiosk business? Maybe the facility you manage could establish new revenue by adding coffee, food, or retail services. Card King International can be the answer to your needs. Card King is a North American designer and manufacturer of the finest mobile coffee, food, and retail carts and kiosks. Card King has been working with clients and corporations across North America for 20 years, providing innovative designs, custom manufacturing, and timely delivery. Carts and kiosks are fun, and so are the dozens of designs on our website. Please visit us today at www.cart-king.com or just call us at 1-877-986-7771 and get your sales rolling. The Opperman Report is brought to you by Aquadam.net. You can give them a call at 707-764-2119. A flooded home is never easy to deal with. You're left with the mess to clean up, the insurance companies to deal with, and not to mention all the memories, the precious memories that are lost in the flood. You can never replace those. And Aquadam can be a tool in your arsenal to protect your home and property from the floodwaters. The coffer dam is filled with water to control water and is reusable as long as it's taken care of. It can protect your home or business from rising floodwaters like a dam, but without the beavers. It can also be used in construction. If you need an area to be dewatered, an aqua dam can do the job. An aqua dam was used at SeaWorld in Orlando for the Mako roller coaster ride during the coaster's construction by dewatering the work area. An aqua dam is now dewatering the work area at San Antonio SeaWorld for their newest roller coaster ride. An aqua dam has been used in many construction projects all around the U.S. and all around the world. Now give aqua dam a call, 707-764-2119. You can look them up online at aquadam.net. You can find them on Facebook at Aquadam Inc. You call them up, you email them, you tell them Ed Opperman sent you, and they're going to take 10% off the price. Aquadam.net, 707-764-2119. Are you ready to change your life but don't know how to start? Is your stress and worries keeping you awake at night? Have you been battling grief, anxiety, or depression all alone? Have you lost touch with your own sense of being or spirituality? Soul Free Therapies offers professional and affordable live video streaming counseling and coaching services from the comfort of your own home. Sessions offered in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Go to our website at www.soul-free.com and book your first session today. If you find yourself in need of legal representation, it can be a very stressful time in your life. In my career, I have dealt with thousands of lawyers, I've dealt with thousands of law firms, and I can confidently recommend to you Keith M. Davidson at kmdlaw.com. Available 24 hours, seven days a week, just log into kmdlaw.com, that's kmdlaw.com, or you can call toll-free 833-4-KMD-LAW, that's 833-4-KMD-LAW. Personal injury, wrongful death, STDs, sexual assault, car accidents, they handle it all efficiently and professionally. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be, because the team at KMDLaw.com are battle-tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Go to KMDLaw.com or call toll-free 833-4KMDLaw. If you're in for the fight of your life, stop screwing around and contact KMDLaw. PureSoapFlakes.com 218-568-2525. Have you ever heard of Castile Soap? Pure Soap Flake Company handcrafts fine soap bars, laundry powder, and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern Minnesota facility. Bathe your body and wash your clothes with pure soap products that are free of fragrance, GMOs, palm oil, sodium lauryl sulfate, and synthetic additives. Keep it clean, folks. Pure Soap Flake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. 
they have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opperman Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to sing a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. I've been using that stuff all day long today. Great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call. 218-568-2525. 218-568-2525. Pure Soap Flake Company is a proud member of the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild.